Hello everyone, in this video we're going to explore everything you need to know about the emigre by Rumens. The aim in this video is to give you all the full mark analysis you need in the shortest time possible. So just to remind you, here's the poem. There's no need for us to read through this because you've already done the analysis of this three, four, five times. What we're now going to do is hopefully add to the analysis that you already have. So, this poem explores the memory of the poet and their experiences in a far off city they spent time in as a child. The poet is looking at this city through the eyes of a child and therefore there's a nostalgic, happy memory attached to it. She compares these truths, however, to the truth she knows as an adult, which now obviously is much harsher. Contextually, Rubens was born in South London and grew up there and she said that it was fast, she had a fascination with everywhere or elsewhere. This fascination is clear in the emigre which deals with a land and city which for the speaker is permanently elsewhere. The poem draws examples of emigration from countries such as Russia and places such as the Middle East where many fled corruption. So whilst there's no direct context to the poet themselves, there is obviously context in relation to where she may be making reference to. In terms of form, the poem is written in first person as an account of an emigre's relationship with their homeland. This once again creates an immediate connection between the reader and the speaker, enabling us to understand the basic message in a far more immediate sense. The last line of each stanza uses the phrase sunlight, which reinforces the overriding positivity of the poem and the tone of the city. The poem uses enjambment to create a flowing, piece of, uh, flowing meter, which helps to create the narrative's voice, which enables to create a more conversational style in order to create a kind of uh, greater sense of dialogue once more. Structurally, so the poem follows a free stanza structure with repetitive elements throughout. We've already highlighted that a little bit. The opening of the poem seems to encompass the speaker trying to capture a memory. The second stanza builds on this detail, and then further the flashing out, and then finally, the poem seems to veer towards an idea of facing up to a modern, dark idea of the city itself. The first two stanzas uh, could be said to use enjambment to represent a sense of freedom, whereas the final stanza is far more in terms of punctuation here, which could create a sense of feeling trapped and enclosed now, which creates a more, helps to create a more negative tone. There's a large amount of imagery used in this poem to try and capture the concept of the city, including its personification, though much is deliberately vague in order to represent this place could be anywhere. The poem does not have a particularly consistent structure or use of rhyme. This perhaps encapsulates the still uncertain understanding of the speaker about her city and a lack of assuredness about it. Finally, linguistically, the place of the poem is not named, so therefore the poem offers a more general consideration of the relationship between people, the places they left behind in childhood, and to which they are unable to return. There is ellipsis in line 1 indicating flashbacks or exploration of past memories, that's more of a structural idea. My original view, obviously is a metaphor, this idea that the city is some kind of souvenir, is shiny and maybe even unrealistic. Shallow as her childhood memories possibly are. The white streets of that city, again, it's that idea of the innocence and purity of that place that she once knew. I comb his hair, obviously personifies this city, it treats the memory almost like ch with childlike tenderness, which reflects our own tenderness and childhood at the time. The repetition of accuse creates a more sinister identity to the oppression of the new city. And finally, falls as evidence of sunlight. Again, con the contrast of light and dark, the juxtaposition here, shows how the speaker is coming to terms with two separate identities. And that's it. So feel free to go back, pause in place that you need to, and good luck.